Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Um, this is the International Student Advisory Board um, session. And just give me a moment, I'm going to throw up the slides. Okay, can everybody see my slides? Excellent. Okay, yes, yeah, so we are the International Student Advisory Board. My name is Danika. I am the staff support for the advisory board and I am the International Student Engagement Coordinator. I'm just going to pass over to Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole and I'm an International and Postgraduate Officer at LUU. I'm from Ecuador, I did my degree at Leeds University in Sustainability and, uh, Sustainability and Environment Management and I came into office last year, I've been in office for about a year. Um, I'm going to pass on to Elena. Um, hi, I am Elena, I'm from Spain, I'm in my third year at University of Leeds and I am studying genetics. I'm going to pass it to Sajal. Hi, I'm Sijal and uh, I'm from India and I am in my third year, like just completed uh, and I study business management. I'm going to pass on to group three. Thanks, Sajal. Hi, everyone. I am Gurpri and I'm from India. I'm a master's student and I'm doing MA in corporate communications, marketing and public relations at the university. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you ISAB members for being here today and for Nicole. Um, so first I'll just tell you a little bit about what is the International Student Advisory Board. Um, so it's a focus group of 30 international students. We meet five times a year and we hold themed sessions encouraging open discussion, tailored feedback and anonymous reporting. Um, and these topics revolve around what the international students want to talk about, but also what we notice needs some international student feedback. Um, ISAB members attend staff meetings, they visit schools, host discussions and manage events, such as um, an open discussion we held during World Unite Festival. So to jump straight in, um, question number one. Um, what has your experience of being an ISAB member been like so far? And I will go straight to Gurpreet. Gurpreet, could you tell us a little bit about your experience? Thanks for the question, Danica. Um, I think shifting countries uh, for your education is really a daunting experience. Um, while I was here in the induction week, it was through a professor that I got to know about ISAB. I looked up at the work that was being done and I really thought I should apply for a position of student member at the International Student Advisory Board. Um, so I did and fortunately um, I got in and I've got to work with a bunch of really amazing students and of course Danica and Nicole. Um, I think um, in every meeting uh, all the student members and Danica and Nicole we've worked together on really pertinent issues concerning international students. We've also had Excel sheets where we can see the progress of what has been done, what is um, in the process and where are we with the initiatives and actions that we've thought of. So we know that concrete and substantial work has been done throughout the year. So I think it's been a wonderful experience. And I think uh, at the end of the year, I can actually say that we have in the best of our capacity contributed towards a positive experience for international students. Thank you, Gopri. It's so good to hear that you've had a good experience. And um, I'll go next on to Seja. Seja, would you like to give us a little bit of information about what your experience has been like? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, absolutely agree with uh, Gopri with what she said. And I think my experience as well has been really fantastic. I've been a board member for two years now. And I think I joined when, when it was the pandemic and that was the first time an ISAP International Student Board started in, at LU. So uh, I think I think like I joined because I thought that uh, being an international student for one year, uh, I could contribute uh, with my experience to the board and help other international students like myself facing the similar problems um, uh, so I think, so I joined ISAP and uh, I think um, it's been wonderful so far. And um, besides contributing and making a positive change, I think I've connected with a lot of other international students and, uh, who I share a lot of issues and a lot of similarities with. So I think it's been awesome so far. And, uh, 
everyone has been really lovely and um, quite helpful as well and quite approachable. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Sejal. And um, let's see, who have we been? Oh, Elena. Elena, would you like to tell us about your experience, please? Yeah, thank you. So, like Sejal, I've been part of the International uh, international Student Advisory Board for two years. Um, and like both corporate and Sejal, my experience has also been very great. I think that um, being part of this group has built my confidence so much because I'm a very shy person by nature and and coming into a new country where I was I wasn't that confident in myself when speaking in English not in any classes or in for presentations and I found that when I joined um, this group I was able to express myself without having that fear of other people judging me because I knew that the people in that in this in, in, in that I was with people that ha have the same experience as I was. So it helped me find this community where I could express myself in a low risk environment. And I, at first when I joined, I was also not sure how I, how, how I could contribute to, to, the, to ISEP, to International Student Advisory Board, because I'm from, the, the, I'm from Spain, the uh, European Union, and I didn't feel like I wasn't a real international student, but seeing that we, went through the same experiences that we will have similar struggles i was able again to find a sense of belonging in this group and and i was not only able to help myself and my as my own in my own experience as international student but i was able to see how we could improve other international students lives and i think that's one of the best things i have experienced as isap not only just it didn't only help me; it helped all the students in the in the university. So I think that's, yeah, that's my experience so far. Awesome, thank you, Elena. And then lastly, Nicole, it's quite interesting because you led the board as the international and postgraduate officer. Well, how's your experience been? Um, first of all, I think it's really nice to hear from everyone. They've had a positive experience with the board, and the board is doing what it's meant to do. Because in my eyes, an international advisory board is to make international students feel integrated, make sure that they feel represented, that they can voice their feedback, and that feedback is not just left floating in the air, that we're actually doing something about it. I think for me, it's been really rewarding to lead it. Um, it's been great seeing everyone come back from COVID stronger than ever, having meetings in person, um, and then working with Ijanika to kind of make those changes has been really, really good. I think the international advisory board is a great model um, to make change, especially for international students. Um, I really, really enjoyed um, seeing it develop and um, being part of that development over the past year. Awesome, thank you. Glowing, glowing re um, reviews all around. <laughs> it's very nice of you all. Um, so I'll pop on to question two. And question two, I'm going to leave as an open question for you all to um, discuss. Um, and this is, what do you consider to be the most pressing topics discussed of the last academic year for international students? And um, I'll start with Sejal, and then um, please feel free to everyone jump in. Thank you. I think, yeah, uh, I think from what we've discussed in our meetings and like from what I've heard from our students, inter other international students speaking, I think um, racial discrimination has been something that's been quite critical and um, um to the last academic year um because like we've we've heard cases where uh, where students actually came through these problems and they faced it and they were in a situation where they didn't know what to do at that point and they didn't know that they felt helpless and they didn't know what to do so uh, it's it's quite it's quite a terrible situation i personally think uh to be in especially when you when you have no no one to like you don't have your family or you don't have any um any one to like in this country um so i think racial discrimination was something that we discussed a lot um and i also would say uh, mental health um because of the switch um from going from online classes to like face to face and this year has been like quite a mix of face to face and then online and then we saw strikes and um so it was quite difficult to like come out of that isolation and to like communicate with others and then go back to uh, a bit of a, like a normal environment. So I think mental health and racial discrimination, I would say. Um, yeah, what do you think, Helena? 
Uh, yeah, I think that due to COVID, uh, the mental health of, of international students have, has been, um, we have been struggling a little bit, not just because, as you said, like from switching to online to in-person and just the, the exhausting experience of coming to a new country where they speak a new language and your brain has to switch so much and that and when I came here for the first time, the first few weeks, I was so exhausted, even though I wasn't doing anything in particular, but just by being in a new environment, hearing this new language all the time, it's very exhausting. And also because of the pandemic and due to isolation of traveling and, and all of that, that, that was also quite, um, that also could dam damage a little bit for mental health because we, you have to be isolated. You cannot build that, that network of people, your safety net during the first weeks of your of your university life and you're not able to be, to build the, the network that you will rely on when you are feeling sad and I think the sense of belonging to the community is one of the parts that has been uh, most difficult for us and also uh, with these feelings with or with these feelings that are in our struggles we sometimes don't know where to go for help and that's another of the issues that I found and over that we talked about in in, in the International Student Advisory Board. So I, th that, so I think that um, uh, not knowing where to go for help, we don't know that we can actually go and report our mental health well-being or if we have suffered through an aggression that we shouldn't experience alone. And I, th and I think um, that, yeah, I'm gonna pass it to group right now, I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, I think both Sejal and Elena have put forward really uh, pertinent questions, uh, I mean, issues that international students had to face. Uh, just to add to that, I also feel that because of the rules that kept on changing in terms of COVID and uh, let's say few countries first were in the red list then they shifted to the amber list then a lot of students, international students had to bear the extra costs while traveling. And it is certainly a huge amount back in our home countries. So I think that was, um, uh, you know, an important issue for international students who are traveling to the UK for the first time. Uh, another thing that I also feel uh, was um, really um, an issue for most international students was that when you are going to another country to study, uh, there's also this change in the education pattern like I don't remember writing any papers back in my home country. We simply had exams. But here most, if not all, most assessments are the you, you do write papers. Uh, so I think a lot of students did face problem with the pattern of writing and the basic assignment pattern. But the uh, university did make facilities uh, uh, available for that, including the library one-to-one -one support and weekly sessions. Uh, however, I felt that a lot of students uh, had this issue that there were not enough appointments that were available due to staff shortage. Uh, but, and uh, we did bring this to our student board meeting um, uh, and we discussed and I was really happy when in the second semester a lot of appointments were available and there was staff to help us out where people could actually make complete use of that facility. So I think that is one thing that I'm really happy about that we as a board have uh, achieved and I think that has really helped the international students as well. Um, Nicole, do you want to add something? Yep, um, I would just like to say that I think every, every single one of the themes that everyone's mentioned kind of encompasses the bigger theme by a sense of belonging and what it means to be a student, um, an international student, not only at Leeds, but UK wide. Um, I think some of the biggest topics that have been discussed around this year around COVID, mental health and wellbeing, um, discrimination, all of them link to having a positive student experience at Leeds. And that is what the union and the university should be working towards because it is clearly what the universe, um, what international students should be getting and that value for money that they should be achieving from this um yeah yeah i couldn't i couldn't agree more of all of you and with what nicole said that um yeah we do a lot of stuff on academic representation and that is really important of course but 
you know, it's so important to think about sense of belonging. And whilst we do get feedback on how we can improve academic representation from ISAB, we also get a lot about how you feel whilst you're here. And it's so important because this is your home for three years or possibly longer. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Really good to hear your opinions. Um, now, moving on to the last question. What advice do you have for staff wishing to support the international student voice? So staff who may want to do the same as what we're doing here, or maybe don't have the resources. So what would you say are the key things to aim for if you really want to celebrate student, international student opinion? Um, and I'll pass to Elena first. Again, this open question, please feel free to everyone go for it. So my first advice or tip would be having an institution that cares that for me has knowing that there are people who are willing to listen to my struggles and to my experience has been very welcoming and I feel that just by having that it makes everything so much easier because sometimes when when you go to a new country it's like you sometimes feel like you've put yourself in a situation where you are going to struggle but knowing that there are people to listen to your experiences to to help you through this um, journey with you makes it Things so much easier and also having creating a safe space where we can talk about this without feeling that we're complaining it's so crucial because again we don't want to to complain about our situation which it's very privileged in a way but also we don't but also we, and we don't want to complain about it, but sometimes we go through things that we need help to go through and having someone that listens to us, that acknowledges us and that wants to listen to us and create a safe space for us is so important. And I think that, um, that uh, I think all of you will agree that it's really important to have uh, a safe space to talk about our struggles. I'm gonna give the floor to, to Gurpreet. Thanks, Elena. Um, to add to what Elena mentioned um, about an institution that cares, um, I feel that the university should take a holistic approach. It is not about one school in the university. We are not just talking about a business school. We're not just talking about a design school. We are talking about the university as a whole, about all the students. Um, uh, and I've also noticed that uh, it usually does take time or maybe it just doesn't happen like uh, international students and home students. I've hardly seen them together. I know it is, of course, uh, the duty of the students as well, but I think the university can also uh, take this into um, notice and uh, just bring about some initiative for that barrier, that wall to break between the home students and the international students and for them to come together. So, yeah, uh, I'd like to pass on to Satan. Yes, thank you, Gurpreet. Yeah, I agree to Alan and Gurpreet what I said. I think it's really important for our staff to like really make the students feel that they care and their voice is being heard and it's important what they say. Um, besides, I also want to add that um, I think like there's so much of information that's that's coming through to students, uh, especially at the beginning of uh, the uh, beginning of the year. I think uh, it's really difficult to like navigate information um, with all the uh, work stress that we have as well. So I think I think uh, maybe staff could make it easier for students to um, to like. Um, to like put the channels together and like make it easier for them to navigate that okay if i'm facing this problem i think uh, i know where to go because i've heard like a lot of my international friends like they, they were going to mental health, mental health issues and I, and they really didn't know how to uh, contact the nhs or or even the student well-being uh, support office so i think it's really important for them to make it more easy and simple for students and that's what i would like to add um what do you think Cool. Um, I just think to echo what everyone has said, it is about the staff understanding what it means to be an international student at Leeds and like furthering their own understanding through seeking for it. Um, I think 
personal tutors, um, even your lecturers, that it can all be really helpful and mentors to international students. And to do that, they need some sort of intercultural training and to understand why it can be hard um, to be an international student. So I think my advice would be definitely seek that out, read some papers, talk to your students, um, talk to your international officer, come to International Advisory Board, do those kind of things, because through getting to know international students as a group, you can help them better. And there are lots of things that international students need to be helped with, such as bridging the cultural bar barrier, bridging the um, language barrier, how to integrate into the British community, and sometimes being a mentor to them in that sense. Um, is really, really helpful and you don't know how much of a difference it could make to an international student's life. Thank you, Nicole. I couldn't agree more. Everybody, thank you so much for all of the like time you've taken and for all of the thoughts you've shared with us. It's really, really important stuff. I'd just like to draw everyone's attention to our um, email addresses and LinkedIn. So this is just a short snippet of what we do on the International Student Advisory Board. And if you'd like to know more, please drop us an email or reach out to any of us on LinkedIn. Um, respectively, in all of our roles, we can give you a different perspective of, of the type of work that we do. So I'd like to finish by saying, Thank you very much for taking the time to watch our presentation. Um, thank you very much, ISAB members, for coming along and for Nicole for taking the time as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Mm -hmm.